Hey guys, how you doing? This is Frankie Roberts and today I'm talking about the envelope section of the Redominator uh, by Audio Realism. Um, please find my description uh, about more information about the synth, uh, a link to the actual website of the creators of this soft synth. Um, you can also find links to my music, uh, my Twitter, Instagram handles, whatever. Get in touch with me, we'll talk about it. and. Uh, yeah, let's get uh, to music making together, right? So this video will be about the envelope section of the Redominator. And why I decided to create this video was because I was used to the actual hardware and I never had a problem with setting up the envelopes on the actual hardware. But as soon as I got a soft synth for of it with a visual rep representation, I got some errors and made some errors actually. I was a little bit confused about how it worked because I was of course used to, uh, for example, the ADSR setup, which is actually very simple. And I was trying to find the right setting to create a visual representat representation of the soft synth. So let's have a look at it and um, if you turn the synth around, you can actually find a visual representation representation of the envelope, which is also printed on the keyboard itself. So T1 in combination with L1 would make up the attack and L1 would represent the volume it would reach and the T would represent the time it would take it to reach level one. So normally you just have an attack and it's hard coded in the soft synth how much time it is and depending on the volume of the oscillator, it will get there at some time. But with this synth, we can actually set the level of the attack. So I attached a scope to the synth, uh, which is routed from the CV out of the envelope to the end of the scope and let's have a look at how it works. I've set the uh, amp of the synth to the envelope section instead of gate, which is a really nice feature. And um, that's also the reason why uh, the Juno sounds so uh, authentic, specific. So let's have a look at the sound it creates now and try to set up. So this will be the level of the attack. And if we change the T1 parameter, it will take more time to actually reach that level. So this will be the attack of as of the of the synth actually but it will only work if you change the level right so this will be a very short uh, not very loud attack setting so now we could use the t2 parameter in combination with this and t2 is this part so it's the decaying part but there's actually two decaying settings there so from T2 to T3, they're both decaying setting. So if we change the T2 uh, to take some time, and let's change this to number five to the, the half setting, and you can see that the sound is trying to decay there. So this is a very simple saw-like uh, envelope. You can see that if we change it, you can change it to a triangle sort of shape. And the time of this envelope, it's, it's a very long time. And that's why it's nice to create pad sounds and other pitch sweeps in the, with, the, with the envelope. So we have a saw tooth, uh, kind of like, like wave. 
and we want to change the decay setting of the of the synth so as soon as i release the key i want to have the sound decay and um, while i hold it i would like to have the synth keep the note right so that's the setting there let's change it to so it actually decays Took me some time, but we're there. <laughs> so when I hit the key, it will sound like a piano like. It will have a piano like uh, structure. So let's look at the sustain setting. You could you could specify the L3 as actual sustain of this sound. The, of the, the key you're holding and d4 could be uh, specified as the release so what we're looking at d1 l1 would make up the attack t2 l2 and t3 would make up the decay there's the sustain and that's the release so you can see the complete structure now. Let's add the attack to the equation. And as soon as I release the key, D4 comes into play. So there's now envelope there. So if I change the T2 parameter, you will see that you will see that this um, this latest part which is now bent, it will uh, straighten out, right? So it gets a different, little different structure, which you can use for like uh, moving pitch, uh, pitch bench, actually, pins, pitch bends, actually. So you can see that when I move the L2 parameter. Um, to be more down, it actually became lower than the sustain setting. And, and you could see that it was moving there. Which is something very nice also with pitch, uh, in combination with pitch, um, pitch envelopes to yeah, create moving sounds. And together with the long attack times and the long uh, the long settings you can create on this envelope it becomes really nice so let's have a quick look at it so anybody who's familiar with the with the hardware synth will know the pole position preset right which was based on some pre 90s um some 80s atari game um where he was racing a formula one car and it would sound a little bit like this it was shifting gear there anyway i hope you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe and i'll see you in the next video let me know if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll be there. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye bye.